that we had uh, uh, your brother on earlier, uh, Tristan, come on earlier. Your thoughts on, on Alex Jones uh, being back on X? I'd rather hear his thoughts on Elon Musk being the biggest maverick of the last 500 years. I'm not kissing ass here. Elon, You, I mean, you're, you've got big ones, man. On every front, you are literally overturning the entire power structure. I was just going to say this and let Andrew get in, but I, have, I just want to say this while you're here. I, I mean, you are... This guy, his voice is so annoying. This is one of those those things where which I always I always question people who just fall in and believe in them and are taking every single word they say literally these guys are all millionaires these guys have all made money from some shady ways except elon musk even though elon musk is the richest person on earth they will sit on a platform like this and say they are trying to control the world who are the ones trying to control the world these guys are already millionaires so if you're saying they are trying to control the world that means you're telling us you guys are trying to control the world how can Elon Musk sit there and say they are trying to control the world when he's the richest person on earth? Is he among those who are trying to control the world? Yes, he is because he does make prices and he has an influence in the market of today. And the worst one of all is, um, what's his name? The guy with the quirky voice. Uh, what's his name again? Um, where is he? Where is he? Um, Alex Jones. Alex Jones made millions and millions of dollars from lying about kids who were um, massacred in a school. He made millions, millions. And they will come on a platform like this and try to make us believe that what they're saying is the truth and what the others, the others is in quotes. When they always say the others, who are the others? Who are they? They will always say they. They are trying to, to, to change the narrative. They are trying to, they are, they are. Who are they? And then you also have Andrew Tate made his millions from using girls, vulnerable girls, teenagers to do his webcam. His words, not my words. Your goal is to inspire a girl to make money and give you the money. So the way you're going to do that is you have to have some element of influence and you're going to have that element of influence through her respecting you, looking up to you and her believing she needs you. And this is extremely important because at the beginning she will need you, but then she won't need you. But you have to keep that fallacy, keep that dream alive that she can't do this without you to ensure that she doesn't do it without you. I will also use those girls to make men, miserable men, to give me all their money, to sell their houses, I will take everything from them. And I will make them broke. The fantasy is now ruined. Like, so now they're like, okay, when can we meet again? When can we meet again? You said you liked me. You said you loved me. Hey, why don't you stay over? They're, they start getting really pushy and you end up like losing the customer because you can't keep meeting him without nothing happening. Girl doesn't want anything to happen. So you got to kind of keep it in the fantasy world. So we learned from this. After this, girls cannot meet guys under any conditions. So what the girls would do is they promise meetings. And here's maybe this is a bit bad. Here's where the famous would start. So it'd be good, like I had a lot of girls who worked for me and the best was like the Ukrainians or the Russians. It was amazing. Cause they'd get some guy, fall in love, da -da -da. they'd arrange the day to meet, all this shit, da -da -da -da. Ah, I need a visa. Okay, get a visa. I need money for a visa. Okay, how much is a visa? It's $900. Oh no, but it's not $900 cause I went to the embassy, they think I'm a, a risk and I need a, a return flight there and back and I need a hotel and I need to have spending money in my bank account they won't let me come. Or how much do you need? All right, 10 grand, boom, 10 Gs, boom, bang, thanks. Wow. Go to the embassy, take a picture outside the embassy, boom, come back. They rejected my visa. They said we have to wait two weeks. After two weeks, they'll give it to me. Okay, baby, boom. Two more weeks of tips. Boom, 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 boom. Because now he thinks he's going to fuck, right? He thinks he get the girls. Now he's spending more than ever. Two weeks, two weeks, two weeks. Two weeks come. Some other problem, whether it's visa, whatever, whatever. We make up some bullshit, right? All Just, these OnlyFans chicks can learn from you, man. Oh, no, man. No, no, but you know, like, like a free, people, people, people watch free people, OnlyFans tutorial. Yeah, here people, in the, in the people, people, people would say, why did those girls work for you? Because the girls would work for me. And at 50%, because it was 50-50, would make millions per month. If they worked for themselves, they'd make fucking nothing. I was the best in the fucking game. 
Why? Me and I had a whole team of staff. Dude, that's fucked. The girl, the girl would only work six or seven hours a day online. So how but, did it end? Uh, bro, the story's just begun. Oh, fuck. <laughs> you want me to tell you? I can shut yeah. up if you want. Wait, you could have double dipped and started a coaching to coach these guys too, right? I, I could have, but fuck, I'll give it all for free because I'm rich already. But so <laughs> the girl would be online for six or seven hours, but then when she logged off, was sleeping or whatever, on her WhatsApp, I'd have staff. She was online 24 hours a day. Her WhatsApp, her this. She was famousing when she was asleep. We were bringing money for the fucking sky. We were promising all these meetings, all these pictures outside of embassies, all this shit. Eventually, the girl, what she would do is she'd say, oh, I don't want to go embassy. She'd give a really lame excuse to try and provoke the man to get angry. So she'd say, the embassy want me to come back, but I have a headache. That was the one we'd use. <laughs> he'd be like, I just sent you a million dollars. You promised you were going to come. You said you had to delay. Now you're saying you have a fucking headache and you won't go to your appointment to make him mad on purpose because that would annoy any man. And then that's what we needed. We need the little trigger. We go, why are you being aggressive? I'm not being aggressive, but you're not serious. Da, da, da. And then we'd say, but you know what? I, I really like you and I'm flying to the other side of the world by myself and now you're being aggressive and now I'm intimidated. And we'd flip it on him saying, well, now you're being scary. No, I'm not being scary, but you, you know, it's your appointment. You're supposed to go, yeah, but I feel sick and you don't even care. Female bullshit, female mother, bullshit. And flip it on him, oh flip it God. on him. And he'd get fucking furious because we were really good you're at fucking- both sides. Yeah, poking him to the point where you go like, you're a fucking scammer, you fucking scam me, get really mad. I can't believe you think I was a scammer. I was gonna come, I went to the embassy. You're a fucking liar. Every man in my life has only lied to me. I thought you were different, da da da. Big, big beef, big nice argument, yep. big argument. But here's the thing. The guy would get pissed off, right? And leave, stop tipping her, stop coming to her. But for these men, that's the only chick in the world, the only hot chick in the world who talks to him. Maybe it takes a week, maybe it takes two weeks, maybe it takes three weeks. He's in bed at night alone, jerking off, looking at her old videos and pictures, watching her stream again from another account so she can't see it's him, sitting there going, maybe she was gonna come. Maybe I just got too mad yeah, when she had a headache. Maybe, maybe, I, maybe I should have been a little bit more patient and she would have been my girlfriend. And 100% of the time, in less than three months, with an apology, a brand new pile of money, and the cycle would repeat. We fucking killed the game. Millions of dollars a week. And it was not just because I had beautiful girls. It's not because webcam is easy. It's because I am a genius, and I put together an apparatus of genius behind the avatar of beauty, and we fucking <laughs> conquered the internet. And I'll be rich. These are the people that we, we the poor ones, will always follow. And they have no sympathy for the poor people. Andrew Tate on the other side will tell you guys that if you don't subscribe to my platform, then you are no man. You are broke. You will die. You are this. The metrics. All those words they use. The metrics. They this. They controlling the world. They are trying to, what was the other one? trying to reduce the population and then you have another one also who's jumped into the fold who is running for the president of the united states vivek ramaswamy vivek also has made millions and millions of dollars from no doubt he's intelligent yes but now he's jumped into the conspiracy because he knows that the conspiracy is going to give him more money he's saying that he says that climate um climate change is a hoax I'm the only person on the stage who isn't bought and paid for, so I can say this. The climate change oh, whoa, agenda whoa, whoa, whoa. is a oh, hoax. Is the climate change is agenda is a hoax. More people are dying of bad climate change policies than they are of actual climate right. change. Vivek is so intelligent. He is so, so intelligent to say climate change is a hoax. Hang on. Before he jumped into the 2024 presidential election, what did he, did he say about Donald Trump? Days after that incident, I wrote an op-ed in the Wall Street Journal arguing that censorship was the real cause of what happened on January 6th. Which when asked in response, yeah. somebody asked me the question, are you that that's that's well, that's what I wrote. I'm giving you the facts okay. of what I said. That's a hard Understood. fact that was published in The Wall Street Journal <laughs> when pressed on. Was that condoning what Trump did? My answer was no. There is a difference between a bad judgment and Understood. a crime. And, and we you're need to be question. able to tell the what difference in this country. What did Donald Trump do, no, I'm not avoiding in your view, that was downright abhorrent? Second time I, I think that, that the thing that I would have done differently if I were in his that's shoes not what I asked, is Vivek, I would have respect. declared re-election on that's January 7th. I'll ask that, it a third that's time. That's exactly the thing what I would have done. What did Trump do that was egregious, quote, downright abhorrent and a danger to democracy? Can you just explain to our viewers your words? So, 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 so you're, you're mixing two different quotes. But what did I think was reprehensible about what happened that day? Look, I think that 
the way a true leader should have handled that situation should have been to actually say, this is me running for re-election, yep. not actually litigating what is already passed in behind us. And I would have done things differently. That is not a crime, though, I, what I he understand. did. I understand. And the reason but, I have been but, so vehement. You keep saying no, what you would have done. I this just want to hear from your mouth. No, no. I would not, unless you're scared of him, yeah. why won't you maybe, say what maybe, he did that was maybe, downright I'm not gonna, abhorrent? I'm not going to let you... St- Stitch, okay, you know, you're stitching quote. together let's, three things from three different let's places. Put the tweet. Let's put on the tweet. Do you want what to, Trump do you last want to week have an actual wrong. conversation? Yes, I want you to answer my question, Vivek. Three Many. times I've asked it. That what did Trump reply- do and, and, that was and, downright and, abhorrent? It's a yes. simple question. It's your words. It's on screen. I think what did he fact, do that was downright I think, abhorrent? I believe that failing to unite this country falls short of what a true leader ought to do. That is why I'm in this race, is to do things differently than any prior president has done them. That's the hard truth, okay? And that's what now made the him reality a sore loser and a horror, media yes, your word. And the, well, the reality is none of that is a crime. And the reason it. I have been so vocal, okay. the reason I have been so vocal is because when somebody actually prosecutes somebody for a bad judgment, and I've been I, clear, I, I understand he made your bad judgments to the litigation. I would have made I different that. judgments. That's not that what I asked is I understand. a distinction we have to draw. That Donald Trump is a sore loser. That Donald Trump lost the election. That Donald Trump was the one who was at fault in the January 6th riot. But as soon as he jumped into it, because he knows that Donald Trump has got a base and the base is so stupid and gullible. The base do not use their brains. He was like, oh, there's a chance for me to go be controversial, deny everything I've said before. Use this word they use always. You take me out of context. What you said is what you said. It's even in your book. And you will never burn copies of that book. So you keep defending what you say in that book till you die. He now says Donald Trump is the greatest president of his generation. Somebody who's voted only once. And who did he vote for? For Obama. And because he's seen that. If you look, Donald Trump also is one. He was never a Republican. But because he knows that his Republican base. In many cases, I probably identify more as a Democrat. It's the first campaign attack ad to take aim at Donald Trump, using his past words of support for the Democrats to skewer him. Hillary Clinton, I think, is a terrific woman. I mean, I'm a little biased because I've known her for years. I think she really works hard, and I think she does a good job. It's from the Rand Paul campaign, and the Kentucky senator actually imitated Trump on the stump. You know, I must be smart. I'm rich. I'm rich, you gotta be smart, right? Trump was quick to respond, telling the Washington Post the attack ad reflects positions he no longer holds. I feel sorry for the great people of Kentucky who are being used as a backup to Senator Paul's hopeless attempt to become president of the United States. Senator Paul has no chance of winning the nomination. And John McCain also launched an extraordinary attack on Trump, explaining why he didn't respond when Trump appeared to diminish his heroism as a POW in Vietnam. I don't like to respond to Mr. Trump because there's no line about You don't want to get into a wrestling match with a pig. You both get dirty and the pig likes it. Meanwhile, Trump says he is considering naming a woman as his running mate, and he appears unstoppable in the polls. A new poll says 22% of Republicans in Iowa support Trump, with Ben Carson in second place with 14%. Everyone else is in single digits. We caught up with America's Got Talent judge Howie Mandel at Radio City Music Hall. He says he's enjoying the Trump campaign. I'm enjoying all the news feeds more than I'm enjoying it before. I'm enjoying, I would never tune in and stay from beginning to end to a debate. So it is a a plus for America, for television, for comedians, for entertainment, and especially for Trump. And look at this. Which Republican presidential candidate is still currently leading in national polls? The Big Brother contestants sequestered for seven eventful weeks are given a pop culture quiz. They guess that Jeb Bush is leading the polls. Watch their reaction when they learn the truth. Jeb Bush, Jeb Bush. (laughs) Donald Trump. Ah! Wow! Are you are full of shit he jumped in there and he said it himself he said if i if i ever won 
to be the president of the United States of America or be a Republican. Because he knows the plan. He knows that the Republican place is all about guns and no brains. You rather have guns to kill people, but no brains to think for yourself. So this uh, uh, live stream was full of them guys. We have to, we have, there's something that I saw the other day where somebody was saying that get off social media, but he's on social media. He said, get off social media, go do something for your life. But he is on social media telling you to get off. The thing is, he is not saying that, meaning that you should get off. He is saying something that will scare you. And then what happens at the end, you will say, follow me join me so we can change the world so he's telling you from the start get off social media but at the end of his live stream he's going to tell you join me so uh we i'm gonna just uh, let you guys to watch this too to listen to it and use your brains think for yourself and probably if you can comment let me know what you think and then we'll have a chat after it's a free world freedom of speech, let's share ideas, let's be a little bit civil, respect each other, and hope that the world would be a better place. So, let's jump right into it. We're literally changing the entire paradigm, and and you, you've definitely got the system scared, and, and so everybody needs to support X, everybody needs to support the sponsors on X. I personally am doing all my Christmas Did shopping this year with all the great gadgets and stuff that are on X, but I'm going to shut up now. But I would imagine instead of talking about Did Alex Jones, I'd like to hear Andrew Tate talk about or ask questions. Did you hear what I said? Everybody, everybody needs to buy X. Everybody needs to buy the messages from X. Everybody to hear everybody. I'd like to hear about that. His voice is so annoying and he looks so, he has to go to the gym. Andrew Tate has to tell him, Alex Jones, go to the gym, look after yourself, dress well. Those are the things he preaches. So speak to the people who are almost on the same power with you. Tell him to go to the gym because he looks, he looks, uh, in those days when we were following the court cases uh, that were brought against him from the families of uh, the kids who were murdered in the uh, this Sunday Oaks Elementary School, the guy was coming to court. He was, go to the gym. You've got money, man. You've got time. You've got people working for you. Go to the gym. Look after yourself. And maybe stop chewing the gums. You've got so much money to take care of yourself. And that voice, I know is a voice that was given to you by God. You guys claim to believe in God, in Jesus Christ. How can you claim to believe in Jesus Christ and you say kids who were murdered in, a, in an elementary school is a hoax? But you claim to believe in Jesus Christ. This thing about Americans always saying that I believe in Jesus Christ, I believe in Jesus Christ, but they do not actually live their life like people who believe in jesus christ remember jesus christ died on the cross for you and for me he wasn't selfish he was down to earth he gave his life for you and me but you guys today keep saying i believe i believe i believe in jesus he's my lord and savior but the way you live your life is not the way jesus wants you to live the life I don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe you're right but he was not he was not the person that you got especially alex jones kids have been kids were murdered massacred and you say it's a hoax and you said it's a, it was a conspiracy theory and you made millions and millions of dollars from that just like i said before they will always want us the poor people to give us their money indirectly or directly like what he just said he said oh, go to x buy all your christmas shopping x i'm also shopping from x but he's got he's got his own platform and he's selling christmas present christmas gift to on his platform so you see they all support each other and surprise surprise and Ted might be selling something too let's check it out questions to elon musk yeah, well, Alex is certainly a, a friend of mine. I've known him for a long time, and I'm extremely happy he's back. I've celebrated that publicly, but Alex nailed it. Elon is taking the biggest risk here. 
It takes unlimited energy to propagate lies. You have to continually repeat them and you have to continue to try and falsify information and hide the truth to keep lies afloat. And this simple purchase, you call it simple, the purchase of a simple website has literally cracked the matrix in real time and it becomes extremely difficult now to run the psyops they were previously running and enslave the populace, which is their primary goal. So Elon is a hero, absolutely. And the risks you are taking, Elon, I don't think many people at home actually understand the gravity of the risks you are taking because your ability to speak freely is heavily leveraged against your insignificance. You're only allowed to speak if nobody listens to you. And if you get big and people start listening, they're going to come at you hard. And I think I'm not completely versed, but from what I understand, Elon's already suffering the lawfare tactics, which they're going to do. They're going to keep pulling out the hat to try and slow him down or, or oh, stop Oh, oh Andrew, let me interrupt before I forget. I don't give any attention. The same law firm that came after me with these PR firms. You've just dropped out, I think, Alex. He's just dropped out? Anyone else? Can you... Yeah, uh, I think he's, he got a it's, call. It's, no, he got it, a call. Yeah, go ahead, Alex. There is a three-letter agency running this. Not all of them, but let's just say it starts with a C and it ends with an A. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. Yeah, absolutely. And there's liberal NGOs, which will sponsor agents of the Matrix. They'll sponsor females to end up in a house party and then lie to try and then put you in a Romanian jail cell and get you sitting with the cockroaches in a dungeon. And it's a very scary world where you get to a point where you're only time trying to tell the truth and they're going to punish you for that using endless lawfare. And this this battle has only just begun. But the Matrix has truly cracked now and it's going to be extremely hard to lie to us like they did before with X the way it currently is. And I think it came at exactly the right time. I almost, without trying to sound pessimistic, there was a point where I kind of felt like I was losing hope. You couldn't tell the truth about anything. Everything was a lie. Everything from head to toe was a lie. And they're trying to lock us all back in our houses again. And we can finally talk about it. It's truly heroic. And Elon's taking massive risk. And the respect I have for him for doing that is 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 enormous. Absolutely. I mean, this is what happened. I'm going to shut up. So I want to hear from Elon. But this is so historic. Elon Musk's courage, and it's true, I'm saying has broken the back of the globalists. They'll, they'll never be able to turn this around again unless they have a nuclear war. We, we, you know. See, this guy's, uh, as I said before, he's saying that Elon Musk has broken the back of the globalists. Who is Elon Musk? Elon Musk is the richest person on earth. So who are the globalists? These platforms, to be honest, they come and they tell us that we're here to tell you the truth. How can you say you're here to tell us the truth when you have Andrew Tate, who has been accused of doing this and that to teenage girls, and before he was arrested, he himself said it live, that that's what he was doing, that women are stupid, that women are lazy, that all you need to do is make them to believe in you, make them to fall in, in, to fall in love with you, use them, and don't pay them. And if they ask for proof of payment, just fake something and show, and show it to them. And then you turn around and say, people are lying and you are the one saying the truth. So you are the truth. You've made yourself the truth. Anything but from you is a lie. And if you look at this, this live stream, they are all bunch of liars. Alex Jones made his money from lying about kids not being massacred kids were massacred he said it was a conspiracy that's how he made millions elon musk will say things but he's got the money all the money in the world anyway he can say whatever he wants and which law firm is going to go against elon musk which law firm there is none he's the richest person on earth if you want to go against uh, elon musk that means you want to go broke and then you have Vivek uh, Ramaswamy, he's joined the gang. He's going to come and tell us that uh, climate change is a hoax. He's going to come and spew all type of nonsense. Somebody who talks and doesn't stop. He can talk and talk and talk and talk and talk and dispute everything that he himself said. So he lies and he lies to cover a lie. But it's a game. All these guys, they know it's a game. They know that. There are lots and lots of poor people out there who are just looking for somebody to believe in. Looking for somebody to say something that looks like they are siding with them. And what 
they are going to say doesn't really change their life it doesn't make them richer it doesn't change the state in which they are but they just give them that false belief so that is what this live stream is all about lies elon musk has broken their back yeah who is they well i guess some people are afraid to die but i am not elon musk <laughs> That that's and you know what? It's kind of crazy because I was talking to someone the other day and I was explaining they were asking about my seizure, how they took all my houses, all my money, all my cars, blah blah. And I said, You never truly own anything on this earth anyway. You can have a piece of paper that says you own it, but if you piss off the government structures, they just get a judge to stamp a different piece of paper and you no longer own it. The only thing you own is your soul and your integrity. And this is the one thing they cannot take away from you, no matter what they do to you. And that is the best feeling on earth. It doesn't matter if you can sell your soul to the devil and repeat what they want you to say, but then you truly own nothing. And yeah, I think I that as, as history books look back on this pivotal moment when X was finally freed and the information of the world could finally be spoken freely, I really do believe we're on the right side of history. And if you were to ask me if there's anything worth dying for, it would be for the freedom of humanity and to be on the right side of history. So I agree with you absolutely, Elon. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, all, I, 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 I'm just generally in favor of civilization and the furtherance of civilization. Um, and I think we should always be concerned that uh, we can regress as a civilization and if you if you study history you just you, you just see the the arc of, of one civilization after another as the civilizations rise and fall through history um we've, we've been in a period of civilization rising very rapidly but we should be concerned that it it, it may we may we may be cresting we may subside um and and, and there, are, I have to. There are many times where I, have, I get late stage civilization vibes, um, you know, and I'm just worried that that maybe we're cresting as a civilization and and perhaps headed for for a fall. So, yeah. Well, I agree with you because I I truly believe, and a lot of people have ever said this before me. This is not original idea, but I think as AI and machines and tech increases, a lot of people are going to be deemed useless by the overlords. And then you have to sit and decide what are they going to do with all these people who have hopes and dreams and they want health care and they want a garden and they want a house to live in and they don't want to be treated like cattle. They're going to become extremely inconvenient. So I don't think many people at home understand that this war cannot be avoided. I've had a lot of people who understand why they threw me in jail in Romania and understood I've done nothing wrong. And they said to me, why do you take up this fight? Why you don't just delete your Twitter and disappear and drive a Ferrari all day? And I explained that this war cannot be avoided. You're either on the front line and you're fighting for something or you're sitting waiting to die. You're waiting for the Mongol horde to come over the horizon and chop your head off. There's, no, I totally no agree. Out of it. And just to throw this in there, if you read, and Elon, I knew you were doing great work. When I saw you six months ago at the World Government Summit, where they're all just saying we're going to make everybody eat bugs and we'll make the decisions to put microchips in them. And you said, we don't want a centralized system. We want a diverse system. We want firewalls. And I don't agree with this Tower of Babel you're building. They know that we go through cycles and they want to artificially create a great reset collapse in their own words to make everybody else poor, consolidate power, and they'll have a smaller type two civilization for themselves. And I think you're trying to build a type two civilization or even a type one civilization, I should say, uh, for all of us. And, right. and you said we, we need to have a debate about, we need to have a debate about uh, going interstellar. We've got to expand yeah. or we collapse. And Elon Musk is saying, correct me if I'm wrong, we, you don't stay in stasis. You either expand right. or you collapse. So yes, you're exactly. Creating, oh, you, you, either grow, you either grow or, you're, or, you, or you collapse. You, 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 you don't, the steady state is, is basically an impossibility. So you have to pick it, you have to pick, make a choice. Do you want to grow civilization, uh, or or do you want to decline and and collapse? And because you know, it's steady state is it's not stable. So, and I say we grow, and I say we expand, and 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 we 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 have more humans, and we become a multi planet species and a space faring civilization, and ultimately be out there among the stars. And I think that is the the, the exciting, inspiring thing for for the future. Uh, not a declining human civilization that dwindles to nothingness and, and, and where humanity dies with a whimper. And that's the bottom line. I think it is the battle of people who believe in humans and humanity and want it to expand against people who are so selfishly going through the earth and so selfishly orientated that they don't care about expanding civilization. They just want to control the humans that are currently here. And, and Andrew, I totally agree with you. And an arrogance. I totally agree. Let me throw this caveat because I've read the writings 
uh, Bill Gates and Klaus Schwab and the Club of Rome, they know we could easily expand. There's plenty of room, hundreds of billions of known galaxies. They know that, that this is just a seed that's going to not just grow into one giant oak, but an entire forest, an entire universe. And so they want to shut everybody else down because they can't deal with competition from the Elon Musk that come out of the general public. They want a global tyranny so they can direct it and control it so that they direct the expansion. And we can't let that happen because they literally talk about in Agenda 21, the official UN plan, a 90% world population. So we need to go with the Elon Musk plan. And that's why I tell people that get upset, they go, Elon Musk is involved in every advancing technology. The globalists are pushing that too. Well, technology is like a gun. It's whose hand it's in. And so we need the gun in the people's hands, the gun of expansion, instead of in the globalist hands. And so just because Elon Musk is on the cutting edge of every technology, don't fear the technology like some troglodyte. Fear us not being in control of it. And Elon is saying we need it to be an expansionary human explosion of competition and freedom, not some new dark age with a tiny breakaway civilization that's only working for itself. Sorry, I'm ranting. No, no, but you're completely right, because if, if Elon doesn't push these boundaries, they will push these boundaries. And once they have the sole control and the monopoly over such technologies, it's over for all of us. And I don't think most people understand. It simply is the humanistic view against the death cult view. And there's people in the world who have yes. no interest in they have no interest in growing humanity, no interest in advancing the species as a whole. Their interest is in power sure. and control. And all they want to do is have absolute power over the people that currently exist and their children. And you can talk about all the perverse reasons they want to do those exact things but it's truly scary and all the people at home who don't really understand the gravity of this fight they seem to think it's right wing left wing ha 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 yes exactly that, they're, look, you see, they're, they're thinking about it the wrong way it's, it's, <laughs> sorry it's just got a little x here um uh, it, but, but it, it, you're totally exactly mm -hmm. it, 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 this right left is it's it's the wrong way to think about it it's it's uh, the, the sort of the extinctionist versus the pro-humans uh, and once you see that it's extinctionist versus the the, the, the human, the, the pro-humans, then it, it becomes very clear. So, Elon, when are you going to, I know you got a hundred irons in the fire, but I've really, when you talk about we need to create a, a plan B for humanity, well, that's really. No, it's not, it's not a plan B. It, 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 I mean, I, I, an, I alternate, said, an alternate, an alternate master plan, because the globalists oh. are controlled right now. You're trying to wrest control with us. Helping. I mean, when, when are you going to put out your battle plan, or, or are you already putting it out of pieces? No, I mean, I mean, what what I'm saying is that actually, I, I think we 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 should, we should expand humanity. Uh, like, basically, we should have basically more more kids. Uh, you know, we, we, population should increase, uh, and 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 we should uh, become a, a multi planet species and uh, and, and you know make life multi planetary, build a self sustaining um, civilization on Mars. And 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 then ultimately, you know, this will be long after I'm dead, uh, probably. But uh, well, almost certainly, uh, we, we can go to other star systems and and go out there and I don't know, maybe we'll find some long dead alien civilizations. Um, and I don't, I don't think we want to be one of those lame one planet civilizations that never got beyond, you know, its home planet. Um, I mean, we gotta, you know, you know, what are the aliens going to think of that? <laughs> it's like we we, we got to make a good showing. Team human. Well, Let's yeah, go. and that would absolutely that would be certainly disappointing. <laughs> but so. but it's, it's 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 essential, and and truthfully, it's so amazing we didn't even speak about these things. Only two years ago, you couldn't even speak about these subjects, but it's so pertinently obvious to anyone who pays attention. And it is scary, and 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 expansion and humanistic views are certainly the way to progress, and it has to be done. There's no other way. Just like a business, just like you guys said, if you stand still, you die. And uh, it takes a few brave people to, to break the matrix. You have to break the dam. And I think bravery is so important because it puts a crack in the dam. And it shows that if there's people out there brave enough to risk getting canceled, risk no, no, lawsuits, no. risk lawfare, then it's going to inspire I'm bravery amongst fair. the rest of the populace. And it becomes extremely hard I'm to lie to brave fair. people. And, and I think that that's one of the largest pandemics of Earth today is bravery. And when I say bravery, I don't mean that in any kind of negative connotation. Bravery is, is being full of love and loving the people around you and sticking up for your community and loving where you live and loving your country. And it's brave to do those things. And it's love. What are the globalist teachers? Children are bad. We're ugly. Humans create you know all this racial division. They want us to hate each other, so we just yeah. give up, roll over, so the globalists can have the future. 
I would just yeah, like to I say think here, the globalists are, are short-sighted too, because the, the, the thing is that you can't really separate yourself from civilization. So I think th those those who are sort of advocating, like like it's re it's really, it, it, I think it's just logical to be pro-civilization. You don't actually necessarily have to be altruistic. You just have to think long term and say, obviously, you cannot exist in any in any good way without civilization. I mean, just look at watch one episode of Naked and Afraid and see how much you want to go live in a forest by yourself. Um, well, we're it's, we're it's, in a very it's we're not in a fun. very we're in a super pivotal moment now, and the reason we're in a pivotal moment is because the machines cannot do the policing as of yet. My brother and I often sure. talk about how bad COVID would have been if they had Terminator machines. You didn't have your mask on. You couldn't even appeal to the empathy of the person who knew how insane it all was. As soon as the yeah. machines control the policing, it's absolutely over, and we're not that far away. So we're in a very pivotal period now where the bravery that's required to resist the globalist oppression has to happen now. Soon the technology absolutely will exist. And it's over for everybody. We, we are we are at a critical, critical crossroads right now in the entire future of the human destiny. And and, and I called it Plan B, but I mean, Elon, what do you call it? Just an alternate plan for humanity? Because we can have a debate because, because the Black Rocks and the globalists are right now in control. They, they were 100% control. You you and others have felt rested to maybe they're in 80% control. They're losing control very quickly as people discover what they're doing. But what would you call the debate and discussion about a pro-human future? Just team humanity? Yeah, team humanity. Absolutely. That sounds like, that sounds good. Um, but, I, you know, I think, like, something that's, that, that is really important is, is, like, you just literally have to have kids or there's no, there's no next generation. I mean, Alex, do you, do you have kids? Yes, I do. I'm not as prolific as you, but I wish I was. It's the best thing in my life. I have four. Okay, great. And, and Andrew? I do have a few. I won't let you down, Elon. I'm coming. I'm okay, coming good. to take over your title. I'm coming to take over. <laughs> I'm doing my best. You know, I, I, okay. I use my good looks for something. Well, I think we I think we I think we ought to encourage people to to you know uh, have kids and. Um, and, and, and this is the bottom line argument. This is what is so important. We just talked about how the globalists are ultimately selfish and only care well, about look their at own most, most of the globalists don't have children. And yeah, of yeah, course, because right. they're selfish. Here's the when thing. You, you, guys, you guys are all attacking the globalists. But if you ask a globalist, like I have friends who would, I would consider globalists. If you ask them, their ideologies are aligned that they believe that somebody living across the world is just as valuable as somebody who lives in America. And I know, you know, there's but they've already enslaved the third world and then no, no, but, no, but that's not how everybody who you would categorize as no, you're a, right. a lot of useful they, idiot no, globalists. That, that's but not, the globalists at the top are depopulationists. That's oh, their so, world. So, so maybe if you want to look at the top, you can say globalists at the top. Some of them might have that view. But, you know, if you just talk to an ordinary person who views themselves as a globalist they're not saying oh you know i'm evil i'm they're, they're not an evil person they just have this belief that every every per human being around the globe is equal that's that's i all would call that government. an internationalist so, that's an internationalist a globalist wants one world government run by corporations yeah well, I, I mean I, I think you can label them differently but i think if you talk to somebody well henry kissinger gonna... was a globalist zabigny brzezinski was a globalist i'm not trying to be mean to you but their their number one rule is the earth is too small we can't expand We've got a bean count and put everybody on rations. We've got a social engineer and in the normal human program because humans are failed. And they want to turn us into factory farm humans. Those well, are a lot of survivors. I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll answer the question. Well, I'll answer the question. Sorry, quickly. guys. If, if, I, if we can just say, like, some, some of these titles are a little confusing. If, so, if, someone's, if say, someone's an internationalist or a globalist, I, I think where what, what can achieve some disambiguation here is to say, like, it, does, does someone have as an axiomatic belief that there are too many people on the Earth, or do they not? Do they have? A, do they believe that the Earth can sustain the current population, or do they think it cannot? Now, the the reality is, Earth can actually uh, handle a, a human population probably ten times larger than the current yes. population. Earth is actually very sparsely populated by humans. We only see density because if we're in a, in, in an, uh, a dense urban environment like New York or, or Boston. London or something like that. Um, but if, 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 like, here would be like a good test. If, if you took, took a plane from LA to New York and you try to drop a bowling ball and hit somebody, you, your chances of success are basically zero. You, you'd have to drop 10,000 bowling balls, maybe. <laughs> yes. You, you, you just, the, 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 and, and I'll, I'll tell you sort of something that, that may, may, may scare people a little bit is that there are thousands of objects falling onto Earth from space.
all the time. But how often do you hear about someone, someone actually getting hit by falling right. uh, by, by meteorites? Absolutely. I think there's one known case of a woman with her house getting hit by one. E- Elon, yeah. I, I want I want to just respond to Ed actually for a second because again, when it comes, I want to, I think I think it's good to get a good counter view here. I think that there's two different things going on, Ed. And I know what you're I know what you're trying to say, but there's a separate point about your obligations, right? So you can and I believe a lot everything has been said about the importance of expansionism. For humanity, for humanity being pro civilization and expansion, pro human race to win. That's like a separate axis, though, from saying where are your obligations where you are, right? So we talked about procreation and family. Then we talked about the nation. Well, look, I'm I have two kids. As a father, my moral obligation, I believe, is first and foremost to my family, and then let's say as a president, my moral obligation is to the citizens of the nation that I lead. And then you can worry about hunger in the Congo or whatever else needs to happen in the Darfur or, or in other places. And so I don't think that you're saying necessarily that that life charity begins at home. Charity exactly. And that's home. not saying that that life abroad is any less valuable inherently. And so when you say like the globalist view is that all it's saying is that all life is equal wherever it is on earth. It's not like I think the view, an alternative view is countering that. There's also just a separate place in terms of where you're situated, where's your obligation, right? Is as a, as a father, it's to your family. As a president, it's to your country. And just because you believe that's the hierarchy of your obligations means somebody else is a leader of one of those other countries. And that's an obligation that they have too, but that's like a different discussion. Well, the, neoliberals, yep. they, the neoliberals in their own PR, they're the ones doing the worst things on the earth. They just say, oh, we want global government because we want to give Africa's representation. Then they lock them down for three years and starve 30 million of them to death and then organize them to flood us as a, as a political underclass. This is cold-blooded Henry Kissinger's State Department Memorandum 200. I mean, yeah. they've got... I, 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 it, it's not black and I white. I think it's two though, different right? conversations. But, but what yeah. is black and... Wait, what is, can, can what, we what just, is, I'm, I'm sorry. What is oh, black, go ahead, Andrew. Go ahead, Andrew, and then we'll go to Dave. Andrew? Okay. What, what, what I do believe is black and white is simply if you read a history book, you'll see the worst things that humanity have ever done have been do, done with good intentions. That's what's so bad about evil acts is that people Road think they're doing the right thing. And that's the most dangerous thing about it. And this idea that they look at all human life as sacred and all the same, I actually disagree. I think the reason they will prioritize people in a third world country, for example, you'll say it's because they see us as equal. I think it's because they see us now as spoilt and annoying. They don't like that we need pensions and living space and health care. They simply want slaves in a robot class and they'll do anything it takes to get it and they'll get it from anywhere they can. And when someone comes along and says, well, my intentions are good. I'm not interested in that because you can name any Holocaust or any atrocity in, in history. The people didn't think they were the bad guys. They often thought they were the, the good guys. And I guess the easy way to look at life is you want, you want to be having as many children as possible. You want to pray other people do the same and you want those people to enjoy freedom. And anyone who's coming along restricting speech, restricting access to certain things, restricting movement, restricting, all they're doing is trying to restrict so they can control. And nobody in a history book ever who did that either was the good guy. I think it's very clear to see who's on the right side of history and who isn't. And I advocate freedom for everybody. If I have disagreed with absolutely everything Alex said, I'd still be glad he's back on on, on X, and these people can't even handle a different opinion. Do you think they're going to allow the people of a different opinion to them to share water or share food or share anything else once they and have And the reason control? they don't want another opinion is they want to misrepresent what Elon Musk or Andrew Tate or Vivek Ramaswamy or any of I'm telling you, they want us silenced so they can lie about what we, what we said. Yeah. I have a, and, and I, I have a I, quick I agree quick, with you. I have, I have a, a, I, I have a quick question. Oh, good. Jackson, I'm going to go to you right after uh, Dave. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I'm just saying I, I agree that with you there. I think that a lot of the media and a lot of these platforms do want to silence voices because they want their voice to be heard louder. So, yeah, I, I definitely hear you there. I, I definitely don't. I definitely as when it comes to global globalists, I think, you know, it's not black and white. You're not either a globalist or you're not. I think people fall in between and they have there's different reasons for why people might feel one way about one you know, you could say globalist idea and another. So, so I, I mean, I, I don't like painting people like, you know, in, with a black and white pen because I, I feel that everybody falls somewhere in the middle. Can, uh, all can I, I just know say, is this, but, that there are people that want a corporate world government whose aim is depopulation and not giving the general public access to technology by lying about resources 
and 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 literally saying carbon dioxide that plants breathe is evil, and then telling us the world's going to end in 2030 and the ice caps are all going to melt, and and none of that's true. So our children basically give up on the future and decide not to have children. That's all I'm saying. Elon Musk is promoting an optimistic pro-human future that the science and evidence shows is real and that we need. Gentlemen, I have to yeah, go. Yeah, I, I just, I just okay. want to be sort of, uh, yeah, exactly, I want to be clear about Please, my position. I'm, su I'm super pro-human, and I mean all humans, uh, you know, humans in America, humans in, in Somebody's Africa, got their thing Asia, open and everywhere Somebody's else. Somebody's got their phone open in the bathroom. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, Vivek, Vivek, that's, that's your phone, Vivek. I'm not able to mute you. Vivek. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, Elon. Um, Sorry about that. So, um... <laughs> well, I hope you feel better. I feel now. great. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, um, yeah, uh, you know, I'm super pro-human like, for, 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 for Team Humanity here. And, um, and I just think we want to make sure that people have a positive view of the future. And, and in, like, I think I, I encounter a lot of people who, who have actually very pessimistic conclusions about the future. Um, and and if, you say, if, you, if you try to unpack that and say, where does that pessimism come from? Um, and, and, and I think, like, these are, like, you know, good people, like they have, they, they have good intentions. I think they, they, they think about they often come from is believing that there, that, that, that there are too many humans on the planet. This is false. Earth can easily sustain far more than the current population. Um, and, and, but, but they've been told this, this thing and they have believed it and it is, it is false. Um, I'm, I'm, now, I'm, 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 I'm very, I'm very pro environment. Obviously, Bye, I, I, I might have done more about more. You know, I'm certainly I'm, I might have done more. You know, for sustainable energy than than maybe any single human. Um, so I, you know, it, it, I would consider myself an environmentalist, but I but I also believe in in, in physics and and reality and um, and not and not sort of being alarmist about things. Um, and, and well, I'll, something you said was really smart, and I've because I've seen the equations. I'm not a mathematician or rocket scientist like you, but we need the fossil fuels to get to the new technologies and transport. You can't yes. cut them all off and then not have it. To, they're they're blowing up the bridge that gets them there. Yes, so Andrew, I would like what I would I, like to say. Go go ahead, my final my final point. I would like to say. I often get asked by people who follow me, they say, who do you think who controls the world? Who do you think the matrix is? And I use the matrix as a very simple way to explain that they purport a false version of reality that everyone buys into to keep your mind occupied so they can extract your body heat from you for the soulless machines, which are essentially, essentially the globalists we're talking about. And I try and say that I still believe that we run the world. There's a lot more of us than them. We still control the world. It's just down to what we will accept and what will allow them to do to us. And that's why bravery is so essentially and so essential and so important. And I know I can come across as brash with my no, message. But no, no, I'm you're telling, not. Stop I'm telling 16 year olds, when I'm telling 16 year olds to go and get rich and buy a fast car and train hard and go to the gym, et cetera, because these young men are far less likely to blindly comply. And it's extremely important that they don't sigh off the next generation of, of young masculine youth. And, and that's why the still, system was scared of you, Andrew, because you were I, doing it version of it to shock them out of it to show them how to have a destiny how to have desire how to want to be into the future and then that's well, the same thing in a different you're, way you're you're, you're, you're you're right we still control the world and it's down to what we will accept and it's going to take bravery and love you need to love the people around you and love the human race and love the place you're from and i just want to wrap up by saying that i would never kill myself and if they put me back in that dungeon to starve i hope you will all do your very best to get me out because i'm gonna very we will Andrew, love you okay we now got understand uh, what all these guys are their aim of coming together and doing this uh, live stream if you listen to what Alex Jones said at the end of the live stream he said we love you Andrew Tate and Andrew Tate also said guys please please make sure you support me if they put me in jail again because uh, this week he tried to get his uh, properties back from the Romanian authorities and he failed. And he knows, he knows, we all know, you know, I know, that some of the things that he was allegedly accused of might be true. Why? Because he said so himself. There are maybe 50, 60, 70 videos online which are confirming what he was allegedly accused of. Anyway, 
I'm not here to to explain or I'm not here to say somebody is guilty or not. Uh, you guys should go listen to this live stream yourself. Uh, they are all trying to group together. They are all trying to form a very strong conspiracy organization. They know that most of the things they've done before are wrong. And if they are really, really serious, they have to take the responsibility of their actions. Your actions have consequences. And when those consequences come, take responsibility. Anyway, guys, anyway, people, uh, it's been a long one. This is the longest uh, YouTube video I've done so far. Hopefully, this one is going to be good. And I just hope you guys to uh, support my platform. Subscribe, follow me, give me those thumbs up, click that notification button at the top. So if I do any of these ones, I'm not going to be perfect. YouTube is free for you and me. You can do yours, I can do mine. If yours is nice, I'm going to subscribe. I'm going to comment. If mine is nice, you two have to do the same. Uh, with nothing else to say, I'll see you guys on the next one. Stay safe. Be good. Have some empathy to those who are really suffering, who are worse than you. And try not to lie just to make money. Life is not all about money. And with that, I'm not going to say anything. I'm out. Salute.